So welcome everyone. I'm gonna sh show you some uh, results we have, uh, or let's say some challenge we had in modeling the current state of the Haitian epidemic. So this work is part, it's in a framework with different uh, universities and in partnership with the uh, Ministère de la Santé Publique et de la Population and partner in health in Haiti. The Ministère de la Santé, so all these people contributed to that work. And uh, in our lab, we've been model, we're, we've been modeling uh, the cholera in Haiti since uh, 2011, and we so and since then the, dyna the dynamic of the of the infection has really has changed. And that's a work that was done in 2012. So we added the red dots to see how relevant it was today, and we can see that there's different phases of uh, the epidemic, and that is a change. And um, so given that we were several groups that work on cholera for, for years, um, so people at John Hopkins and with Minister de la Santé and uh, Parter Elias put off a multi-modeling study. And the goal was to answer the question, can mass synchronized vaccine induced immunity eliminate cholera in Haiti? And they used four computational models that were done by teams that worked on cholera previously. So there's us, there's John Hopkins University, uh, Institute for Disease Modeling and University of uh, Florida in Florida. And the team work independently, and, but share common assumption on vaccine efficacy. So we define those assumptions together. And the goal was to compare scenario with vaccination, with different vaccination uh, plans, and without vaccination. And uh, so since the team work independently, the goal was also to see if uh, the modeling community agree on some common uh, results or if everything's different. And that's a summary to show that uh, there's plenty of choices you have to make when you model an epidemic and that even those teams that work for a long time have different views of uh, what, um, what is needed to model uh, IT. So there's model at national scale, departmental scale, one kilometer grid. Some model have an environmental compartment for Vibrio to be there, some doesn't. Some use precipitation data as a covariate, and some use uh, age structure. So now I'm going to speak about our model because we didn't yet get together on, uh, to merge the, re the result of every group. So I'm going to focus on the model of EPFL. So on, then what changed since 2012? So the dynamics changed a lot. We don't see seasonality as clearly as before. We still see it, but. Uh, there's a lot of stochasticity on the sporadic cases, which was the case uh, happening, like uh, that's an uh, epidemic in Port in 2017 in, uh, in Port au Prince, for example. And there's, there have been plenty of interventions that have also dragged the cholera down. And so it's really needed to update models. You cannot use a model from 2012 to model what's happening right now. So we build a new model at departmental scale. Since all group have agreed to use uh, MSPP data, which is departmental level reports, and we yeah it's fitted from March 2014, but takes into account the um, immunity from uh, of pupils that were uh, getting that were, were infected like in 2010 on 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 on, and we use a stochastic model with a vaccination dynamics, and there's some. Uh, vaccination scenarios that uh, we use with different uh, vaccine efficacy. And uh, so in our model, I will just go there briefly, but uh, report in each department, we have some compartments and reported cases is what we compare with the data. So that's what we see on the rest below is hidden. And we have people susceptible to cholera that don't have an immunology, uh, that don't have immunity to cholera that can get infected from mobility from other department or like uh, exposure to environmental vibrio and become infected symptomatic or not shedding vibrio in the environment and then they get recovered for a certain period of time and I didn't show here this vac vaccinated dynamic for people who have been vaccinated and so okay there's plenty of parameters there for example how long someone stay recovered and uh, how much bacteria that is uh, shed in the environment will reach uh, drinking, will get uh, exposed to susceptible people. And some of them, we know them from uh, literature, and some of them, we had to calibrate them. And that's the fit we had of uh, 
the last part, so 2014 and on, at departmental level. So the black dot is data, uh, like reported cases from MS MSPP. And uh, we have also, uh, our model is a blue line. So dark blue is the median and the rest is a confidence interval that you have seen. That's the fit, which was quite hard. And now I will show you some, uh, let's say preliminary results. So you shouldn't probably get to count on the results that are subject to changes, but I just wanted to share that with you. And that's with no intervention. That, so, so that means no uh, rapid response team and nothing going on uh, from Korea. And also this was done in January 12. At the time, there was still a culture positive cases. So it wasn't updated since yet. So that's why you don't see also the reflect of uh, the brand new data that we got in IT. And that's, for example, with a big vaccination campaign in Centre en Artibonite, with 70% of people getting two dose vaccination and 10% two doses. And we see that we have a windows of uh, less uh, cholera with the surgeons. And that's, for example, another trial with a vaccination campaign in all departments with everyone receiving, 70% well, of the Asian receiving se two doses of vaccine and 10% vaccine and getting one dose. And that's there. So that's preliminary results and shouldn't be trust as it is. And then we're gonna merge them with other modeling uh, team to try to get maybe reach a consensus or not. I will, we'll see that. Okay, that's it. Thank you, George. Thank you.